all these things happening under Biden, all these Palestinians getting killed on Biden's watch. And Biden has tried to stop the war, supposedly, right? He's, he's tried to make a peace deal with the Israelis. He's tried to get the Israelis to agree on a peace deal, to agree on a negotiation for a ceasefire. And it hasn't happened. It has not happened. The Israelis will say, well, we like this plan, but, uh, and they rescind. Well, we like this plan, uh, and they pull back. And we like this, uh, and they pull back. And it reminds me of when Carter was running against Reagan. And he had the hostage situation in Tehran, I remember. I don't I wasn't there, but I remember reading about this. And Carter was trying to negotiate with the Iranians to release the hostages. And every time it looked like the Iranians were about to agree, the Iranians would pull back. The Iranians would pull back. The Iranians would pull back. And it made Carter look weak. And I sus well, I, I get the impression that the Israelis are doing the same thing. I get the impression that the Israelis are trying to make Biden look weak. Well, we, we could agree, ah, we won't. We could agree, ah, we won't. We could agree, ah, we won't. And so Kamala Harris comes along and she's like, well, I'm going to get it to stop, right? I'm the peacemaker. I'm the compassionate one. But are you really? Because, and this is what people can say, and people are already saying this. Biden has provided more financial and material aid to Israel than any other previous administration since the 1990s. Biden's administration has been very, very pro-Israel. That is used against him. And by extension, it's used against Kamala Harris. So with Trump, it's different. With Trump, they can say, well, this hasn't happened under him. All this bloodshed in Gaza, it has not been going on under Trump. It's been going on under Biden. And Trump is saying that he will bring peace. And Trump is saying that Netanyahu will listen to me. And what did Trump say recently? He said, Netanyahu will listen to me. I will put an end to this war. And he said, as soon as I become president, I will make a phone call to Naughton and I will say, all right, party's over, put an end to this. And so this is the reason why a lot of Arab people in Michigan will vote for Donald Trump, because they think that he can actually put an end to this war. Trump told Netanyahu he wants Gaza war over by the time he enters office. Fun's over, Naughton. Gotta end this shit right now. It's gotta end. It's gotta end. Republican nominee has repeatedly called for Israel to end war quickly, but ex-Trump aide and Israeli official are first to reveal that the request has a timeline attached. Oh, okay. It's, so let's, let's, let's uh, check this out. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has told Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that he wants Israel to wrap up the war in Gaza by the time he returns to office if he wins the election. Two sources familiar with the matter revealed to the Times of Israel this week. The message was first conveyed when the Republican presidential nominee hosted the Israeli premier at his Florida Mar-a-Lago resort in July, according to a former uh, Trump administration official and an Israeli official. While Trump has publicly confirmed having told Netanyahu that he wants Israel to win the war quickly, the sources speaking to the Times of Israel are the first to reveal that a timeline was attached to the request. The former U.S. official stressed that Trump wasn't specific in his appeal to Netanyahu and could well back and could well back residual IDF activity in Gaza so long as Jerusalem has officially ended the war. Netanyahu has long stressed that Israel will maintain overriding security control of Gaza for the foreseeable future after the war, and other Israeli officials have spoken about the IDF maintaining a buffer zone inside the Strip. Okay, so here's what I think is going to happen. Here's what I think is going to happen. If Trump wins, I suspect that Trump's going to say, all right, let's put an end to the bombing. The bloodshed has to end, not in. So he makes a phone call. Israel and America make a deal. War will officially end. Israel will be allowed to put troops in Gaza within a certain zone, perhaps. And part of the deal will be that Israel will be allowed to build Jewish settlements in Gaza. That's what I suspect will happen. I could be wrong, but that is my guess. I suspect that America, under Trump, if Trump wins, will tell Israel, you got to end the war, but you're going to get something in return. You're going to get a buffer zone. 
you're going to be able to put soldiers in said buffer zone and you will be allowed to build Jewish settlements. You see what I'm saying? Here's what's going to happen, Benjamin. You got to end this shit right now. End it right now, Benjamin. You're a great guy. You're a friend to me. You got to wrap it up. It's not looking good for Israel. You got to stop killing people. You got to stop shooting kids in the head, Naughton. You can build your settlements. You can build them, but you got to stop the killing. And if they build settlements in Gaza, which I suspect they will, it is only going to make things worse. That is not going to be a viable solution for peace. And the Israelis know this. And the Israelis don't give a damn about peace. You have I, I know there are Israelis who do want peace, don't get me wrong. But they are Israelis who truly do not want peace. They don't. And if you start putting settlements in Palestinian areas and they start kicking people out of their homes and all this bullshit the same shit that we've been seeing in the west bank for decades it's going to be very ugly this is not going to end so they're going to put settlers in gaza and the settlers are going to come out and say this is our land get out get out gaza is originally part of israel it's judea and samaria it's part of Judea and Samaria. You got to leave your homes. You got to get out. Ow, ow, ow. Get out, you Arab. Get out, you, you inferior subhuman goyim. You got to get out of here. So they're going to kick people out of their homes. And then what's that going to do? What that will do is it'll be perfect propaganda fodder for the rest of the Islamic world. The Iranians will come out and say, look at how they're treating Muslims in Gaza. The Turks will come out and say, look at how they're mistreating our people in Gaza. This is evil. This is tyranny. And they would be right. And that's only going to foment more hatred against Jews, against